Welcome to another Lumion tutorial. This is Chris Walton from Seawalton Design. And in this tutorial, we're gonna cover the new Aurora Borealis effect. This is a great new shining effect that really can add some, really add a little bit to our models. Um, <clears throat> maybe it's not super relevant in some of our models, but it's always great to, clients always love it when you can take a model and just make something look more atmospheric and fun. Even if you're not realistic, you're going to see the Aurora Borealis or many other features and effects that Lumion has. It's always, it's always great to have that option to just add some flair to see our, our building differently or just maybe emphasize some of the reflective surfaces and to see the sky. There's a lot of ways to utilize this that can really make it pop and get the most out of it and let's go over a beautiful scene that really will utilize and see the aurora borealis in the north or wherever else you'll see it so let's go ahead and jump into it and play with this new effect and hopefully i can help you guys understand everything there is about this aurora borealis effect all right let's jump into that okay so let's dive right into this this aurora borealis effect uh, i had some I joked around with it a little bit in, in the overview because really the percentage of projects that could actually, you know, far enough north or south to see the Aurora Borealis is, is so few, but really it's definitely not worth disregarding for it, its use. It, there's definitely some, um, there's definitely some opportunities and situations where we can use it and throw it in there. Some, something else to throw in there for the client. Maybe the client loves it, even though their project's in Florida. Who, who knows? We move the sun wherever we want all the time in our renderings to get the lighting just right. Of course, sometimes we, we, we try to get the sun correct. But let's just take a look at this effect and potentially see how it can uh, maybe benefit any of our projects, even if we don't see it. And I'll explain that in a little bit. So first off, I have the perfect project right here to show off because I can prove that it is definitely far enough north. Because, yeah, we're actually, yeah, right here. That's where the project is. We'll definitely see the Aurora Borealis here. It's, it's noon and it's night. So perfect timing for setting up the Aurora Borealis effect. Okay. So I have it on right here in this first scene. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab that again so you guys can see it. Aurora Borealis is found in the sky tab. It's the first one right there for Lumion 10. Okay, so we're seeing a beautiful effect going on in the background. And we have a couple sliders here. This is really simple. You guys can pick this up and probably figure it out, but let's take a quick look at what our options are here. You know, if our brightness happens to be too strong, we can damp it in or, or boost it up. Um, and then for color shift, we have it, we're having kind of a blue and green showing right now, but we get all sorts of different variations here we can set this to. And the speed, if we were doing an animation, it actually does animate in the sky. Time offset is kind of that animation as well. Speed is going to change how quickly you know this is this is moving in our animations. Really cool effect. It's really beautiful. And then scale, you could have giant ones or a bunch of smaller ones, however you see fit, and just orbiting, spinning around. And something kind of interesting is. Understanding that this Aurora Borealis actually affects our skylight effect, and I'll show you. So right now everything is set to these green lights here, and I do not have auto preview showing up right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the Aurora Borealis effect, and we're going to do a skylight preview. Notice how everything is, you know, pretty basic. It's well lit but there's not really any major tints of color. So when I add these green lights to the sky, the skylight does work accordingly. Now we have green lighting hues showing up in our lights. It's lighting our scene. Really cool. Uh, so if we change that color shift to, let's see, let's go for like the red. If we can get it kind of red. There we go. They click on that and well I think because we're mixing we have greens and reds going on it's kind of blended in there but it's definitely affecting the light of our scene 
even while we rotate it. And let's see, a bluish purple. We're seeing that bluish purple in, in our lighting. So this opens a lot of interesting possibilities of potentially, I wonder if we turn the brightness down, if it still affects our scene. Not so much, let's turn it back to green. But my idea is maybe we can have this, for whatever reason we wanted to tint our lighting at night to more of this green without actually maybe seeing the Aurora Borealis effect. Maybe we have something like, we scale it huge. I don't know, but it's one lo one more fine tune tool that we can have in our uh, in our toolbox to tweak colors at night. So I thought it was pretty cool that it works with skylight. In fact, if I go to the skylight effect, you know this saturation I think is dialed in. See now there's no color effect, and if I pump this all the way up, we're probably gonna get some really strong coloring. So I, I tested this out in the daytime, and it. it it only seems to work at night when the sky is, is darker, but it's just kind of another cool thing at play that this is working into the lighting mechanics of our scene. So we really covered a lot here. Here's just a couple other examples. The Aurora Borealis being set up in here. It renders kind of blurry in our preview, but in the final it does look quite a bit better. So we can try different color shifts, that green look. I mean, that's, that's pretty extreme. So maybe I can set the uh, skylight effect to have a lot less saturation. We just get a little bit less in there. So that's how we would fine tune this. Here's another shot, the Aurora Borealis. Let's add, make it more red. Let's see, get that. You know, and one thing I noticed too, depending on the lighting, you know, the, the, the real skies you're using or however you're lighting your scene, um, sometimes they'll be really prominent and sometimes they're very faint. Actually, I really like that. Let's I'm just gonna make it a little bluer. Yeah. If we back up, you can see it in the reflection. There it is. Yeah, a little bit in the reflection too. It's a really cool, really cool effect. And again, maybe you can hide it in the background. Actually, we have no, no Roar Borealis here. And now we do. There we go, I got some good reds. All sorts of colors being thrown around. I really like that. So, I think that about covers it. So make sure you're doing it at night. It doesn't seem to work on, on daytime or even late evening scenes. Maybe you can get lucky. I'm not even seeing it in this shot here, but I'm seeing its lighting effects. Let's see. Let's do a quick experiment here. Let's change this to, instead of a pure night, what if we try one of the darkest sunset shots? Hmm. See, I've not really been super successful getting, getting it to show up in anything but night skies, so which is when you would actually see it. So those are the limitations. It's got Aurora Borealis has to work with the night sky. Uh, its lighting does affect, um, it. the lighting in the sky will bounce down and light up our scene according to how the Aurora Borealis colors are set up, which is really cool. And it is correlated with skylight and especially that saturation and brightness slider. And again, it also is correlated with the real time preview right here, the high quality preview we have set up here. If we didn't have that, it could also be under frustration. So all these, 
all of these effects are coming together. They all, they all work together in Lumion 10. So I look forward to seeing some incredible projects, some real legit projects in, in the north, in the ice, and in, in these beautiful landscapes out there really utilizing a proper Aurora Borealis effect. So one day I hope to see them in real life. It's, it's very beautiful. It's a nice little touch that Lumion 10 has added. So thanks for watching, and until next time, guys. Thank you.